Okay, I know what you're thinking about the playlist stuff that we just talked about. Hey, that's great and all, Ben, but it's probably going to eat up my CPU usage and it's, you know, graphical, so that's never good. And, you know, what if I want to control stuff a little bit finer grain? I'm glad you asked. There is an object that you want in that case, and that object is called SF Play. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an SF Play and we're going to load some stuff in. And I've got a couple of keys in here. Um, I'm going to have, uh, that's going to be one and two. And this is going to be nine and zero over on this side. And I'll show you why in a little bit. So SF play goes and you just connect it up. I'm using mono files here. Uh, there are a couple ways to access data. One is with a message called open. And that's pretty self-explanatory. It opens it up and it says, hey, what do you want to load in there? Well, I'm going to use that one. And then it says, okay, what can I do? Well, if you give it the message one, it will play the file. And if you give it the message zero, it will stop playing the file. So I've got that and let's turn it on. Cool. I can also give it some other messages like pause and a message, not an object called resume. And all of these are detailed in the help file for SF Play. Now, an interesting thing to note about SF Play if I keep sending it that value of one, it always starts at the beginning. Interesting. What if I wanted to maybe, oh, I don't know, loop this? Well, let's uh, oh, let's do a message loop. I'm going to give it a variable, and the variable is given by giving it uh, the dollar sign one, and that just means take whatever comes in and pass it on as the message. So it's going to be loop and whatever that is. So in this case, I'm going to use a toggle. So it's going to get loop either zero or loop one. So loop start, loop off. So we'll turn the loop on and we're going to play. Okay, that's enough of that. Um, you're probably wondering, can I do the same thing with multiple SF plays at the same time? You know you can. And in fact, that's exactly what we're going to do. So we'll move that over here. That is going to go to 9. That's going to go to 10. And we're going to connect both of them up. And we'll open uh, that one. Then we'll connect... Now I don't have loop turned on on this guy yet, so let's turn him on. And then we'll start up number one. Now, so last thing with SF Play, how do I auto load a sample? Well, here's the thing, you can do that, but first you have to save your audio and your patch in the same directory. Oh, why did I call it untitled? Oh, all right, let's try that again. Save as SF play test and maybe not all those caps. Okay, that's somewhere on the desktop, I think. Yep, okay, with all my icons that you don't need. Let's delete that. All right, perfect, here we go. So now to do that, I'm going to use an open message, but I'm going to use the full name of the audio file. 
including the extension, the dot wave here. And I'm going to connect it to this one, and then I'm going to do the other one. Uh, XENAKS. Connect it to this one, and this will prove that I'm doing it correctly. So that was currently the cloud of granulated O's. Now it is the granulated mandolin. Granulated mandolin over here. And I have effectively switched them. Uh, at this point, all I have to do is create a load bang and connect, connect. We are in the clear. Uh, that will load them up and everything should be cool.